now we're going to talk about the types of data okay types of data is very very important to understand because this not only helps in the measure phase this helps in the analyze phase in the improve phase and in the control phase so please pay attention to it uh, this is very very important there are two types of data generally that we talk about one is a continuous data okay and another is a discrete data okay so these are two terms continuous data and discrete data that we have uh, in six sigma so we will talk about it what is continuous data continuous data is a sort of data which can be broken down into infinitely different different smaller unit and it still makes sense okay the data which can be broken down into different different units so there are few examples that we can see here you can see we have time so if i have, if i have time here like if i say 5 uh, hours i can convert 5 hours into minutes i can convert minutes into seconds i can convert seconds into milliseconds so time i can further break price i can break because we have different currencies we can convert from rupees to paisa okay height you know height can be from feet to inches to meters to millimeters weight we can do it also temperature distance okay so this is what we call it as a continuous data and is a discrete data any data which cannot be broken down further is called a discrete data okay all type of data which is other than continuous data is called a discrete data there are many types of uh, discrete data that we have uh, likewise in continuous we only have one type which is continuous which can be broken down further but discrete is something which cannot be broken down further but there are uh, various types of discrete data that we should understand the first type of discrete data is called a binomial data which is sort of a binary data which is either yes or no okay maybe true false pass fail defect pass okay the second type of discrete data is called count which is number of people appeared for the exam number of defects number of people attended the training number of people cleared the so numbers then we have nominal data and data which have names or label okay which is like uh, department a department b department c um, Manager one, manager two, manager three, north, south, east. So we are we are comparing different different uh, business units or different different. Uh, we are dividing the data into different different units. Okay. Then we have ordinal. The difference between nominal and ordinal is that ordinal ordinal is when the when the data is arranged in some order or sequence. Okay. Example could be the customer satisfaction score, like. Uh, excellent very good good so you see it's an order okay or very poor poor good very good excellent it's in an order okay so that's ordinal strongly agree disagree strongly disagree okay so the difference between nominal and ordinal is nominal could be in any sort of way like department if i'm comparing department a department c department c it could be in any order but ordinal is when it's arranged in a certain sequence so that's it's a difference between nominal data and ordinal data so this is also discrete okay and last but not least which is part of discrete data is the percentage data okay uh, like 55% 65% 65.3% so if you notice whether it's a binomial whether it's count whether it's nominal whether it's ordinal whether it's percentage all these cannot be broken further this the last sort of unit that you have you will not be able to convert you will not be able to convert uh, uh, you cannot be breaking the binomial data because you will have either true or false you cannot break number of 
uh, count. You cannot say half people or one fourth people. Okay. Similarly, nominal and ordinal you can't break, and percentage also you can't break. So these are two important types of data that we should clearly know that what is discrete and what is continuous. So can I ask uh, people to share certain example of continuous data? Any any example? Any real life example in your respective processes or in your in your workplace? Uh, Simar, just a just a question here. Uh, while while we were considering uh, cycle time, okay, or TAT, okay, uh, this will depend on the metric. Say for an example, uh, if in the cycle time, the the operational definition that you showed, if I'm considering something in minutes, uh, the example that you gave, we want to reduce it from 20 minutes to 15 minutes, we would consider that data as uh, continuous. But in the same uh, example, if we are calculating the TAT into a percentage of how many times we have met the tat of of say uh, 15 minutes that would go into discrete am i correct can you can you please repeat the second one which you said i got yeah. the first one so so say the same tat uh, uh, i have 20 minutes i have 15 minutes if i decide to take a metric as how many times have i met the tat in a percentage yeah yeah that would then uh, we would consider that as a discrete data then. I will talk about it. Yes, that's very good. Uh, that's a very good question. I will I will talk about it in detail so that everybody can understand. Uh, but before I want uh, everybody to understand the basics first, uh, what is discrete and what is continuous, so that because this is very very important. I don't want anybody to have any sort of doubt in their mind when it comes to discrete or continuous. But Anand, yes, I will discuss your point that that whether we can convert discrete to continuous or continuous discrete we will talk about that also so can i ask uh, can i ask friends to share any example of continuous data from your respective workplace respective Meet. organization okay Meet can be the so for example so for example uh, you want to share an example uh, how can weight be a metric what are you trying to improve uh, in terms of metric yeah, in terms suppose, of metric. Suppose, suppose, suppose you have a plant of manufacturing some item which is uh, being sold by uh, by the unit weight like kg or suppose you are manufacturing sugar and you want to uh, you want to see that the mean for one kg of pack the mean weight is around one kg. So you will measure it on a continuous basis. So whether it is around the mean or you are providing less uh, weight to the customer or more weight to the customer. If it is more than one kg then it is will be uh, a loss for you and if you are selling less then the customer may know this and avoid your product. So weight is being uh, used in this process. Great. Very good example Piyush. So weight is one of the continuous data. So for example if I, if I see that my weight uh, I, I am giving away or too much of uh, sugars to the or, or any product to my customers and if i see that the average weight is exceeding my target so i can do a project on reducing the weight and, number also yeah so weight can be one one more thing is uh, temperature so suppose you want to maintain a pressure where uh, uh, this volume and temperature are important so you would try to maintain the temperature within that ambient range because if temperature is more than that, uh, that range then the uh, process may get affected or you may not get the required output so temperature can also be a, a continuous data so, so piyush uh, just want to say something here uh, when you say the range okay uh, if you see if you say that i want it to be in a range between 15 to 20 then whether you're talking about the numbers uh, a, part, a particular uh, category or you're talking about uh, the particular number here so that that makes an impact but if you're saying that i want uh, the temperature to improve from 15 to maybe zero or five then it becomes continuous yes. but if you if you yeah okay so i want more